It's a pleasure indeed to welcome you here today in my capacity as chair of the CAL committee. The theme of the session is creativity and its ability to be a driver of economic growth. A few years ago, the committee undertook an inquiry into the economic potential of the creative industries in Northern Ireland. That inquiry report highlighted the valuable contribution that the creative industries make to our economy, and the committee's recommendations sought to maximise the potential of the creative industries as an economic driver. As chair of the committee and as a former Minister for Culture, Arts and Leisure, I have seen at first hand the rich degree of creativity which exists in Northern Ireland. Our increasingly successful screen industry, our rich musical and cultural traditions, and our capacity for artistic and architectural innovation mean that our creative industries make an important contribution to the economy and indeed to society as a whole. DECAL is the lead department for the creative industries, working in collaboration with a complex range of partners, including Invest NI, the Department of Employment and Learning, our local universities, the sector skills councils, and the many small businesses which make up those different industries. The Committee's Creative Industries Inquiry found that the sector employs 31,000 people, involving at least 2,000 businesses. However, the task of bringing creative ideas to market can be a very challenging one. Amongst our recommendations, we wanted to see better collaboration between the different sections of government that are responsible for the creative industries. We also recommended the publication of a written collaborative framework setting out how those bodies could be better coordinated. And we wanted to see more engagement with the relevant European funding bodies. Among our other recommendations, we advocated a cross-departmental design policy and urged DECAL to consider developing a hub from which government departments could seek advice on how best to enhance the design industries within their particular remit. The three papers that will be presented this afternoon, all from the, Uni from the Ulster University, made sure I got that right eventually, highlight different areas of creativity and innovation. First, um, you'll hear from Michelle Douglas and Professors Karen Fleming and Ian Montgomery who ask, where is design in the Creative Industries Network of Northern Ireland? Then from Dr. Brendan Galbraith and Ms. Kirsty McManus who are looking specifically at high-tech small firms and how their potential to contribute to the economic and social development of a regional economy could be enhanced. And finally, um, we'll examine two specific sub-industries with Dr. Peter Bolan Dr. Carice Hutchinson and Mr. Matthew Kearney, who will examine the role being played by golf tourism and the emerging phenomenon of film tourism as economic drivers. As the newly branded Tourism Northern Ireland seeks an even closer working relationship with InvestNI, how can specific forms of cultural tourism like these be supported and expanded in the future? So with those thoughts in mind, it is a great pleasure to introduce our first speakers today, um, Michelle Douglas and Professors Karen Fleming and Ian Montgomery from the Ulster University. Thank you. I'm going to begin with um, giving you a very, very quick, quick introduction uh, about who I am and um, how I've got to come to do this research. Um, my, uh, I basically did an undergraduate degree here in Ulster University, back then University of Ulster, in the early 90s. And um, in the mid 90s, I decided to make a, a, one of those people who left and moved to London and um, started doing an MA in a place called Central St. Martins and ended up staying in London for pretty much the last 16 or 17 years. And during that time, I have been lecturing in various universities in different areas of design. Um, I've been at Brunel University, and I've guest lectured at RCA and UTS in Sydney. Uh, I've lived and taught at San Francisco State, and more recently in Ravensbourne in London. So I've taken a career break to concentrate in this PhD, and I've returned home. So, um, so the presentation is going to be split into five parts. Um, I'm going to look at the creative industries overview and stats. Secondly, we'll look at the design industry stats and understanding of design as an occupation. Thirdly, we're going to look at what is design. And four, we can concentrate on how design can make a difference. 
And five, we'll concentrate finally on my ongoing and future research into the ecosystems of microdesign businesses in Northern Ireland. The presentation examines the understanding of design as a sector and questions why the visibility of it is so vague in Northern Ireland. Now, current, I'm currently researching the ecosystems uh, um, of small design-driven practices based in Northern Ireland. And I want to highlight how the value of design relates to the regional advantage attached to creative industries growth in Northern Ireland and which should be considered when formulating policy in this area. So just looking at these points, I think there's very little recognition of design as a distinct and essential factor in success within the, the wider arena of the creative industries. There's no, currently no policy or ministerial advisory com committee that promotes the value of design in Northern Ireland. There's no physical space or a council to advise uh, on design policy or ac academic research. Um, design is currently aligned with decal. And I think that design could be, considered, could be considered to be more visible or aligned with the innovation sector of the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Industry. So the UK creative industries were worth a record 76.9 billion in the UK economy in 2013, after growing by almost 10% year on year. Official statistics from the, the Department of Culture, Media and Sport show the industries made an economic contribution which equates to 8.8 .8 million per hour of GVA or £146,000 a minute. Growth in the creative industries was higher than in any other UK industry and was three times the average increase in the UK economy during the period. There are nine sectors in the creative industry and design is one of the growth areas. Okay, so these are the official government <laughs> figures for um, the creative economy, and this is UK wide. Now you can see that the IT software, and well maybe you can't see actually, it is quite small in the slide, uh, but the IT software and computer services industry is the largest group, with creative employment of around 825,000 in 2013. Since 2011, there has been an increase of 117,000 jobs in this specific group. The next largest growth area is design and designer fashion which is the group which had the largest percentage increase in employment in the creative, creative economy between 2011 and 13 in the UK. So moving on to Northern Ireland figures, um, overall in 2012, the creative industries contributed seven, 714 million to approximate GVA in Northern Ireland, which was 3.9% of the Northern Ireland GVA. In absolute terms, the GVA for the creative industries increased by 11.7% between 2011 and 2012, compared with a 2.8% increase in GVA for all industries. Once again, it is highlighted as one of the strongest growth areas in the Northern, Northern Ireland economy, which um, needs to be, I think, examined further. As already stated, the design industry is one of the nine subsectors of the defined UK creative industries, and it has been established that no major studies have been conducted to realise the accurate size of the sector in Northern Ireland. Recent findings have estimated that approximately 6,110 people are employed. Uh, a number of previous attempts have been made to establish the size of the design sector in Northern Ireland. Creative and Cultural Skills commissioned research which identified 256 design firms in Northern Ireland, employing a total of 6,110 people. But there are no accurate statistics to show GVA for, design, for the design sector in Northern Ireland. Though it's estimated that the industry is growing, <coughs> design and advertising and marketing were the only other creative industry groups other than the IT sector with an annual average increase in their number of enterprises between 2009 and 13. Let's have a look at how um, the creative occupations are officially classified within each of the creative industry sectors. You can see that here design incorporates product graphic and fashion design, but design is much broader than this. And throughout this presentation, I will explain where it now sits within a contemporary and emerging tech world, and also where it lives within the other creative industry sectors. So to, to sort of, sc uh, I want to get in a bit further into the areas where I think design actually lives within those creative industry occupations. 
In creative industry statistics, it's clear that design is recognised as a narrow field. It only really says product graphics or fashion within that category. When in reality, design-educated professionals span careers in everything from advertising to crafts to architecture and potentially publishing. But most importantly, it is very closely aligned and connected to the fastest growing sector, which is IT, software and computing. Web design and interaction design are courses that live within almost school, almost all schools and faculties of design uh, in the present higher education system. Through the interrogation of the existing Northern Ireland ecosystem, part of this ongoing research will map an accurate scheme of where Northern Ireland design professionals and graduates are employed and aim to expose the crossovers into other uh, creative industry sectors. This will be a factor in helping to determine the value of design in broader creative industry society and prompt a better understanding of its infrastructure as an umbrella brand. Although the design category is classified as graphics, product and fashion, this presentation will refer to it in a more holistic overview of the traditional model of design practices which excludes the fashion industry. So, uh, this is a screen grab of the current Invest NI representation of the creative industries. And it's great to see that the creative industries has a category there. Um, but what I wanted to point out is that I find it quite confusing. For a start, ICT and electronics live separately and not necessarily, although it may live within this department of the creative industries, I don't think it's being forced out enough. I also think that there's very f a lot of focus on media TV and film and not really much representation towards design, which is one of which is the second gross or growing industry for them. So I want to have a look at how design looks across the UK and Ireland. Um, clearly London is going to be a big hitter for design. Um, it's the largest region being home to Design Council, advisory, which are the official advisory to government, and the Design Museum. The annual Lon London Design Festival is funded through a combination of public and private sources. The Mayor of London's office provides grant funding for the festival. Uh, the Arts Council of England have been long-term supporters of the festival. Private funding of approximately 60% is raised through sponsorship of festival projects alongside, alongside a small range of London Design Festival products and services delivered throughout the year. If we move north to Scotland, uh, Creative Scotland is the public body that supports the arts, screen and creative industries across all parts of Scotland on behalf of everyone who lives, works or visits there. They distribute funding from the Scottish Government and the National Lottery. They also have the Lighthouse in Glasgow, which is Scotland's design for, uh, Centre for Design and Architecture. It's a visitor centre, exhibition space and events venues situated in, in the heart of Glasgow. So it acts as a beacon for the creative industries in Scotland and promotes design and architecture through a vibrant um, program of exhibitions and events. So moving down to Wales, um, we have Design Wales, which is part of the National Centre for Product Design and Development Research, which is based within Cardiff Metropolitan University. The four primary activities of Design Wales are support services directly delivered directly to business, support services for regional development offices and innovation programmes, they have networks, prim primarily the Design Wales network, uh, and research. Uh, Design Wales undertakes research to understand the role of design support and promotion in economic development at a policy level and to, fur to further highlight best practice in support programmes. If we move across to Ireland, we can see um, that there's a star in and around Dublin, but that should be a very big star because um, this is the year of Irish design. Um, Irish Design 2015 is the start of a job creation journey, exploring, promoting and celebrating Irish design and designers through events and activities on the island of Ireland and internationally. It stretches to north and south of Ireland, so we should be encompassed within that. Through a programme of 300 Irish and international events, ID 2015 aims to create 1,800 jobs over three years through sales of design-led products and services, generate an additional 10 million in design-based exports, generate 200 new design-led business startups, and facilitate more than 300 companies in international trade missions and design-based trade events. It aims to engage with an audience of over 3 million at home and abroad. If we move up to Northern Ireland, 
the star gets a bit smaller. But we do have representation here in the form of NIDA, which stands for the Northern Ireland Design Alliance. Uh, it is a key partner in the UK Design Alliance, which is facilitated by creative and cultural skills, and formerly the Design Council, and it was set up in Northern Ireland in 2009. The Northern Ireland Design Alliance is faci facilitated mainly by the creative and cultural skills team here. We do have other representation, though, in the form of Digital Circle, um, which is primarily aimed at a web and digital oriented market, and Creativity Northern Ireland, which covers the broader um, creative industries. So moving on to section three of my presentation now, we must clarify what design is. Generally speaking, I feel that it is misunderstood. It's a misunderstood industry, and in many ways it's also undervalued, particularly in places like Northern Ireland. It's a diverse sector. It encompasses a wide range of professions and activities, including interaction design, system design, sustainable design, service design, graphic design, as well as architecture and urban design disciplines. Design can change lives. It can create better places to live in. It can bring communities together. It can transform business and public services. But how do we perceive design? Some people feel it is an outcome, or is it a product? Is it a logo, a poster, a fashion piece, or a designer chair? Most people mainly perceive design as the image on the left, and rarely as the image on the right. Design is a process. To design something means you need a start point, a problem to address, and you need to get to an end point, which is the solution. What goes on in the middle of this is referred as the design process. One of the main processes used today is user-centered or human-centered design, in which we borrow and adapt research tools from the social sciences, like ethnography, to truly understand our users in context. This is also closely connected to design thinking, and in the case of user research, it will inform the user experience design. So I'm gonna take you through, very quickly, a few different um, types of design process, of which there are many, many, many processes and models out there. But these ones, I feel, are good examples and probably the most famous. Now, the one on the left is called the double diamond process, which is four stages of discover, define, develop, and deliver, and was, um, designed by the Design Council in London. It's one of their own. Uh, the one on the right is a very generic design process, mainly aimed at classrooms and school design education. We have an engineering design process in the top left. In the top right, we have what is called as the squiggle design process, center, uh, created by Damien Newman from the Central Office of Design. And underneath, although we can't re really see the details of it, we have a typical user experience design process. Most processes in design follow a similar pathway in that we start with research, empathy, discovery, define, ideate, prototype, test, constantly iterating until a suitable refined solution is found. This is a process that can be applied to a lot of projects, including industrial design to service design. Design is broader than being a discipline that people perceive in the traditional sense as graphic design, industrial design, or interior design. In a fast-moving and contemporary world, design encompasses new and emerging disciplines like UX, UI, experience, service, games, and apps. One of the best emerging design companies in London is a company called uh, Us2, founded by two graphic design graduates who embraced a digital world. Design is very much at the core of their business. Design is about content and how we use that content, and people who get employed at places like us too in London are from diverse backgrounds, but a large proportion of the employees are from design degrees. These studios are filled with people who complement design and are an integral part of the bigger picture. Design can relate and works closely with other subjects such as psychology, engineering, anthropology, computer science, and business. We need to scrutinize how our current design-driven industries work and thrive, and understand how we can make sure Northern Ireland designers are using and selling design services on a globally competitive scale. Design is about finding innovative solutions to meet human needs, so how can we widen our sector remit to include design for social innovation and design for public services? How can we embed design thinking into diverse companies that will allow them to innovate and grow?
As I've already mentioned, design is crucially linked with innovation. This is a quote taken from Sir George Cox's report in 2005, describing the importance of design. Design is what links creativity and innovation. What are the important aspects of design that we need to consider for economic support and growth? Design professions are central to the strength of the UK, UK's creative and engineering industries. They also support innovation in many other sectors. We have manufacturing, science and technology, design approaches, support new product and service development, open new markets, help to better understand users and investors' needs, and aid long-term long planning. Design is highly export-facing. The UK's leading engineering manufacturing sections are sectors of high-tech aerospace energy, automotive, chemical and food production rely on engineering design, design skills and other design disciplines to develop ideas pre-production and to successfully take products to market. Major global brands have shown how design can make a difference to their company. The idea of understanding a consumer's needs before they actually needed what, what Apple was making has remained a hallmark of the company throughout its history. The idea of empathising with a consumer before a market was even developed set Apple on the path of perpetually looking forward to find out how people would behave. Steve Jobs was probably the most significant figure in the history of design. Design will always be about, will always be about getting the details right, while never forgetting how consumers actually live. In the last few days, an ex-student of mine from Brunel got in touch with me. This is someone who has a degree in product design, an interest in graphic design, went on to do an MA in interaction design, founded a major interaction art studio in London, and came to work in my teaching team for a while in London. He's just landed a job on the newly formed Apple Design Dream Team, and will work in the newly formed team called Interactive Architectures. Design indeed is wide reaching and you don't need to be pigeonholed when it comes to a flourishing career. Design is very valuable. For every one pound businesses invest in design, they can expect over 20 pounds increased revenues. In summary, my research is asking a number of questions. It aims to observe designers in Northern, Ar Northern Ireland and ask, what are the cultural and behavioural nuances among designers in Northern Ireland that need to be considered in developing a strategy to promote diverse, collaborative and innovative associations between micro-creative businesses as a means of encouraging a more dynamic design culture? What are the frameworks needed to define a suitable and sustainable policy for design and innovation in Northern Ireland? And how innovative and diverse are the design and pr production processes used in creating output and solutions for project briefs in comparison to how other leading design cities do it. Qualitative and quantitative research is about to begin, which will drill, drill deeply into what current Northern Ireland ecosystems look like and examine what processes are currently being used by designers within Northern Ireland business. It's expected that the outcomes of this research will provide an important insight into the patterns and intricacies of designers' lives and uncover a cultural perspective on how they approach their work. The overall study aims to compare and contrast how different cultures work within the field of design and ult ultimately offer a new paradigm for how innovation, design and culture can work in an adv advantageous way for Northern Ireland's economic growth. It will aim to understand the cult cultural blueprint for design and innovation in Northern Ireland and offer insights for future policy that can lead to a more dynamic ecosystem. Ultimately, in order to use design as a driver in economic growth, it needs to be more visible in Northern Ireland and needs to be given a structure that can allow research to infor inform policy effectively. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.